1 Chronicles 29 Then King David said to the entire assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is still young and inexperienced, and the work is great, for the temple is not for man, but for Yahweh God. Now with all my power I have prepared for the house of my God the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, onyx stones and inlaid stones, stones of antimony, and stones of various colors, and all kinds of precious stones, and alabaster in abundance. Moreover, In my pleasure in the house of my God, the treasure I have of gold and silver, I give to the house of my God, over and above all that I have already prepared for the holy house, namely, three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the buildings, of gold for the things of gold, and of silver for the things of silver, that is, for all the work done by the hand of craftsmen, Who then would offer willingly to ordain himself this day to Yahweh? Then the commanders of the father's households, and the commanders of the tribes of Israel, and the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, with the commanders of the king's work, offered willingly. And for the service for the house of God, they gave five thousand talents and ten thousand derricks of gold, and ten thousand talents of silver, and eighteen thousand talents of brass, and one hundred thousand talents of iron. And whoever possessed precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of Yahweh, in the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people were glad, because they had offered so willingly, for they made their freewill offering to Yahweh with a whole heart, and King David also was exceedingly glad. So David blessed Yahweh in the sight of all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, O Yahweh, the God of Israel our Father, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Yahweh, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and the earth. Yours is the kingdom, O Yahweh, and you exalt yourself as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. And in your hand is power and might, and it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen every one. So now, our God, we are thanking you and praising your glorious name. But who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to offer as willingly as this? For all things come from you, and from your hand we have given you. For we are sojourners before you, and foreign residents, like all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope. O Yahweh our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name, it is from your hand, and all is yours. And I know, O my God, that you try the heart and delight in uprightness. I, in the uprightness of my heart, have willingly offered all these things. So now, with gladness, I have seen your people, who are present here, make their offerings willingly to you. O Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Our fathers, keep this forever in the intentions of the heart of your people, and prepare their heart to you. And give to my son Solomon a whole heart to keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statutes, and to do them all, and to build the temple for which I have made preparation. Then David said to all the assembly, Now bless Yahweh your God. And all the assembly blessed Yahweh, the God of their fathers, and bowed low, and prostrated themselves to Yahweh and to the king. And on the next day they made sacrifices to Yahweh, and offered burnt offerings to Yahweh, one thousand bulls, one thousand rams, and one thousand lambs, with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. So they ate and drank that day before Yahweh with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king a second time, and they anointed him as ruler for Yahweh and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of Yahweh as king instead of David his father, and he succeeded, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the officials, the mighty men, and also all the sons of King David pledged allegiance to King Solomon. And Yahweh highly exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and granted to him royal majesty which had not been on any king before him in Israel. Now David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. 
and the time which he reigned over Israel was forty years. In Hebron he reigned seven years, and in Jerusalem thirty-three years. Then he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and glory, and his son Solomon became king in his place. Now the acts of King David from first to last, behold, they are written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer, in the chronicles of Nathan the prophet, and in the chronicles of Gad the seer, with all his reign, his might, and the circumstances which came on him, on Israel, and on all the kingdoms of the lands. Second Peter 3 this is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder, that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets in the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles, knowing this, first of all, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being deluged with water. But by his word the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some consider slowness, but is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be found out. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens burning will be destroyed, and the elements will melt with intense heat? But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are looking for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and consider the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, lest you, having been carried away by the error of unprincipled men, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Micah 6 Listen now to what Yahweh is saying. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills listen to your voice. Listen, you mountains, to the case of Yahweh, and you enduring foundations of the earth. Because Yahweh has a case against his people, even with Israel he will reprove. My people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. Indeed, I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and ransomed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. My people, remember now what Balak king of Moab counseled, and what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and from Shittim to Gilgal, so that you might know the righteous acts of Yahweh. With what shall I come before Yahweh, and bow myself before the God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Is Yahweh pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does Yahweh require of you but to do justice, to love loving kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? The voice of Yahweh will call to the city, and it is sound wisdom to fear your name. 
Hear, O tribe, who even has appointed its time? Is there yet a man in the wicked house, along with treasures of wickedness, and a short measure which is cursed? Can I purify wicked scales and a bag of deceptive weights? For the rich men of the city are full of violence, and her inhabitants speak lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. So also I will make you sick, striking you down, desolating you because of your sins. You will eat, but you will not be satisfied, and your vileness will be in your midst. And you will try to remove something for safekeeping, but you will not cause anything to escape. And that which you do have escape, I will give to the sword. You will sow, but you will not reap. You will tread the olive, but will not anoint yourself with oil. And the grapes, but you will not drink wine. The statutes of Omri and all the works of the house of Ahab are kept, and in their counsels you walk. Therefore I will give you up as an object of horror, and your inhabitants as an object of hissing, and you will bear the reproach of my people. Luke 15 Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has one hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, if she has ten drachmas and loses one drachma, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma which I have lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, A man has sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate living recklessly. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he was desiring to be fed with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger? I will rise up and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he rose up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fattened calf, slaughter it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found, and they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And summoning one of the servants, he began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry, and was not wanting to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you, and never have I neglected a command of yours. And yet never have you given me a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, 
Child, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and is alive and was lost and has been found.'"